Passion City Church is a relatively new church still. We're a very young church and every church that plants, like Passion City Church, plants with the pioneering spirit. We're headed out. We want to reach a community or a neighborhood or a city in our case with the story of Jesus, with the grace of Jesus. And so when Passion City Church was born, it was born on a mission with that pioneering spirit leading us forward. But it was amazing for me and our team as leaders of this house to realize how fast the pioneering mentality can shift into a settler mentality and we can lose that sense of what Jesus sent us out in and lose vision of a city, in our case, a city of six million people. I didn't grow up in a house with faith. My dad's Jewish, my mom's Catholic, neither one practicing. So growing up, Jesus wasn't a factor in my life. Uh, so when I got married and entered what turned out to be a pretty rough marriage, I didn't have Jesus to get me through that. There was a point in my life where I was actually going through a pretty rough time. I was with my ex-fiance for five years. September of last year, the engagement broke off. It didn't really go the way I had planned it. Started drinking a lot, and I don't drink it a lot at all. So it was just like a really rough time that I was going through. God wasn't a factor. So I grew up in a Christian family. Uh, we went to church every Sunday. It was like regular Christian family. And one day my dad came in my room and was like, I have to tell you something. And he told me that my mom and my dad, they would be getting a divorce. From fifth grade to 11th grade, I was just holding on to so much anger. And I was, you know, so mean to my mom saying, I hate you and things like that. And I wasn't aware that, you know, she was the one that was providing for me and my sisters and stuff like that. Um, I was just so angry. Well, the church is a living thing. And so the church is either moving forward or the church is moving backwards. But I think there's no neutral ground for the local church. And so every pastor's always got his finger on the pulse of, are we moving forward or are we moving backwards? Because we can't sit still. There is no sitting still. I was reading in 1 Corinthians 9, a passage that we all know so well, that Paul's writing here, and this is what he says. He says, though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. And then the end of the paragraph, he says, I've become all things to all men so that by all possible means, I might save some. And so in the first part, he says, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm free in Christ, but I'm choosing to become a servant to every person so that I may win some. And we, words matter around Passion City Church, and that seemed like the right hook for us. And so we put forward this idea of doing a whole series at the beginning of 2014 around the idea winsome. And it was a play on words because we want to be the kind of people that don't reach the city by force, but reach the city by being the kinds of people who live an irresistible life and who understand that there is an irreducible minimum in the heart of every single person. And what people need the most is Jesus. At the end of it all, people need Jesus. And so we built a series around that theme and around that idea and began the year calling our house up to that central purpose and mission of Jesus. So in the Winsome series, I, I think one of the, the greatest things that I was challenged with was to make relationships with people and to share the person of Jesus. And then two, Pastor Louie mentioned seeing the people. That was just so different to me than just the concept of like, oh, I gotta go share the gospel. I gotta witness to people. Um, you know, it's very different. It's, it's more relational. It's more like once you see people's needs, you see where they're at in their life, you see their circumstances, you see their interests, you see their passions, you know, you start really seeing how the person of Jesus meets those people 
where they are, and then you get to share the good news of Jesus with them. Three and a half years ago, I left my marriage. I was married to an alcoholic, and I needed to get myself and my daughter out of that situation. So it was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, and I had nothing to lean on. My friends started playing some worship music, and I broke down in tears because I realized I can't, I can't do this on my own. I needed somebody to take this from me. I started going to church. Uh, not regularly, so there was nothing that I really clung to. I would go and I'd hear the message and I'd get it and go about my day and nothing really came from it. And it wasn't until this past spring when a friend of mine, we were talking and uh, he knows my whole story and knew how broken I was and how down I was and said, I want you to come to Passion City. I talked to G, who's the leader at Grady, and he said, come to camp with us, and I went to camp, and I just learned so much about Jesus. And I've always knew about him, but I didn't know like all of the wonderful things that he could do. And after Young Life Camp, I wanted to know more about him. And G texted me, and he said, you're going to Passion, Passion City Camp. You're going to camp. And I said, yeah, I don't really know. And he said, you're going. And I went and I started coming to Passion City. Well, we knew we wanted to start the year with the Winsome series. And we're a very visual people. Passion City Church is, um, you know, we, we want to be creative and we want to engage people long before they get in a seat in the auditorium. And we want to inspire them on the way out. And the main idea behind this series is that we want to see the city come to know Jesus. So this isn't going to be a three-part, four-part, five-part series. It just fades away. We want this to be a durable mainstay in our hearts and in our thinking all year long. So we started throwing around ideas. What kind of visual can bring this series to life? And I don't remember all the ideas we started with. We just kept kicking it around. It seemed like several weeks ideas were floating, some good, some not so great. And then our production team came up with what I thought was a brilliant idea. We kept going through all these ideas and nothing was really connecting. Um, nothing was really matching the heart of what we wanted it to be. Nothing was uh, the symbol that we really wanted to have happen. And so um, the timeline kind of kept dwindling down and kept getting closer to when we were going to launch this Winsome series. And, all of a sudden we're like, okay, we've got to figure this out. So several of our team went and sat down at a coffee shop across the street and we're like, what can we do? And we kept racking our brains and the ideas kept getting uh, more and more uh, seemingly ridiculous because we couldn't get anything that really connected with uh, the heart of this. And all of a sudden this idea came out of nowhere of, of what if we did light bulbs? And what if we created this surface that you could screw light bulbs in and it could be this beautiful image of people coming from death to life and from darkness to light. Um, and so we were like, this is it. Like we just paused in this moment and said, this is it. This is the idea. Um, and immediately started going, now how are we gonna pull this off? Um, and being the production people and the, and the logistical side of this, we're like, we've got a great idea. This is a mountain that I have no idea how we're gonna accomplish. And I still remember in those moments going, this is not possible to pull off in this timeline that we have. Um, but we were convinced this was the idea that we needed to do. Once we had this idea, we had to figure out where in the building this would go and, and what kind of form factor it would take on. And um, the area just outside our auditorium, our pre-gathering space, we call it the Oval, had this massive wall that was like the perfect canvas for this idea. Um, the only problem is it's a dramatic curve. How do you mount something that's f uh, flat on a curved wall? One of the guys finally came up with this idea of how he could mount it and uh, he had figured out it could almost be like a kitchen cabinet kind of thing where it would hang off the wall um, and then would be anchored into the bottom and, and this is a brilliant idea of how to do that. So once we had figured out we wanted bulbs, we had this wall and we had these sockets, we had to figure out how we were going to arrange this. Was this going to um, just be one big wall of, of sockets and uh, quickly we realized we wanted to put a word around this. We wanted to put some verbiage around this and so we started figuring out how we could arrange these sockets in a way um, that it would, it would reveal a word as the bowls were being um, screwed in and lit up. So we looked at different words. We looked at um, saying Jesus or alive or life um, or even winsome 
And eventually, um, as our team went back and forth with Louis, we figured we landed on Jesus' life, um, which was such a beautiful metaphor of not only um, people putting their faith in Jesus, but people that we were praying for that um, they would find life in Jesus. So one day I was at the mall with my friend and we were in the van store and he was going to buy something there and we ended up meeting this guy at the store and he turned around and talked to us asking us for some advice for something he was buying. I was in the store looking at skateboard shoes. They were over there talking about the skateboards as well so I started talking to them trying to get their advice on skateboards because I haven't skateboarded since I was 13. I'm 26 now. And um, so we, you know, started some conversation. We saw that there was a connecting point, and we ended up getting each other's numbers. About a week or two later, I texted him saying, hey, what's up, this is Sean. I finally got my skateboard. And he was like, hey, bro, like, let's go to the skateboard park and try it out. And it was amazing because, um, you know, he didn't know anything about my story. I didn't know anything about his story. And um, that morning, I had read this psalm, and it was so cool because um, what he was telling me was, just perfectly related to that. And so, you know, here we are at the skate park and I pull out my phone and, you know, go to my Bible app and um, he, he had no idea probably that I was a Christian. I didn't know if he was at all. He asked me to come to his church. I was like, okay, sure. Like, I never really had nobody invite me to a church like that before. And, um, and he came for the first time. I somehow got tickets to the sold out Good Friday concert and went with a couple of my friends and we were sitting there at the back of the amphitheater half under the cover half getting wet but just it was amazing and towards the end you know it, Louis started speaking and talking about Jesus dying on the cross so that we could come as we are and I was like that was what I needed to hear I needed to hear that that it doesn't matter how messed up I am what kind of mess I'm living in that Jesus died for me the minute Louis finished, Crowder stepped up to the microphone and I looked outside and it's pouring down rain and it's coming in sideways and you expect you'd hear it, but it was silent and all I could hear is him singing, Come As You Are, which has become like my song. And uh, I just knew something was happening. I was feeling something was happening. So I came back on Easter and I was sitting in almost the exact same spot and my friend who had invited me to Passion City was sitting right next to me. Um, and when I heard the, the words, you know, if, if you're ready to accept Jesus in your life, please stand. And I remember looking at my friend and I said, I'm, I'm standing. Passion City Camp was definitely when I was like, this is, this is for me and I know that Jesus will work miracles. The first night he had these letters and one of them was like, this is to the person that's been here, done this. I feel like that letter was for me because he talks about how like, I've been to camp and I've done this and I've done that, like I really don't have to listen. That was my spirit when I first went. And then once he read that, I just opened my heart and I just felt Jesus like pour all of his like love and stuff like that into me. It was right after baptisms. So this is right after people were just telling their stories of how they'd come from death to life. Sean's right next to me and he's like, hey, like, can, can I get baptized? <laughs> and I was like, what? I was, I was like, yeah, let's talk about it afterwards. I was like, this is amazing. This is so cool. I asked him, he's coming. He's asking me if he can get baptized. And then Louis gets further into the invitation. I started listening to what Pastor Louis was saying and it was like, I felt like the spotlight was on me. Like some of the stuff that he was saying, I was like, that he was saying, I was like, wow, like, is he talking about me, but he's not looking at me. Like he's looking at everybody else, but he's talking about me. So I tapped my friend on the shoulder like, so when do I raise my hand? Like, do I raise it now or do I wait till he look at me or what? And I was just like, this is nuts. Like, what is this? One guy stood up and said, I want to put my faith into God. And then I was like, you know what? I want to put my faith into God too, because a lot of the things that he was saying was about me. At Passion City Church, we still believe that if given the opportunity, people will put their faith in Jesus. Not everybody and not every time. In fact, the passage we talked about earlier, 1 Corinthians 9, it said, even though I'm free, I make myself a slave to everyone so that I might win some. 
everybody doesn't believe every time. But if the gospel is presented, if Jesus is presented, then people want to put their faith in him. A few weeks ago, we came out of baptism and the stories were so powerful. I just said before even giving the message, maybe somebody wants to put their faith in Jesus right now. And the guy about 10 rows back just raised his hand and said, I do. You know, this is what people want. People see the life change in other people. They see the power of what God's doing in the lives of the people around them and they want that same power in their life. In fact, at Passion City Church, we say it this way, our lead story is that Jesus is alive. You know, in every church, there are many, many stories, some good, some bad, some important, some less important. And at Passion City Church, we, we know there's a whole newspaper there are things we need to work on, things we need to fix, there are things we need to improve, there are things that, uh, that we love, there are things that um, are important, but there is a headline of our newspaper, and that headline is, Jesus is alive. And when he is alive in the lives of people, other people see that power, they see that change, and they want that opportunity. And so week after week, gathering after gathering, people stand or say, I do, or raise their hands and say, I want to put my faith in Jesus. And what I love about that is, is we have a space at Passion City Church called our access space. And it's just a room where people can come to meet up with someone on our team and say, I was one of those people today that either stood or raised my hand and I want to pray with somebody, even though I just got to pray with Louis and he helped me verbalize my faith and trust in what Christ has done for me. I can pray with a real person and anyone can come there for prayer. They can come there just to meet someone on our pastoral team. But that access space is located right underneath the Jesus is Life wall. And most gatherings, at the end of that gathering, you'll see a person coming out with a family member right beside them, the person they've just prayed with in the access space, a light bulb in their hand, and they're walking out the door right around the corner and our team's helping them put that bulb in the wall. And you'll hear a little whoop or a shout or some applause happen. You'll be somewhere else in the building after gathering and you'll hear, oh, somebody just put a bulb on the wall. And it's their friends, their family are gathered around and they're celebrating that moment. And one thing that we really didn't factor in that the Jesus is Life wall has done it's created a celebration moment for people. And this oval has got a concrete floor and a high 30 foot something ceiling, and it's got great acoustics. And when 15 people are cheering for their friend or their family member, it reverberates all over the whole house. And if you're in a door holder meeting or you're in a planning meeting for the next gathering or you're, you're in between having a break time and you hear that, you go, yes, this is what our house is about. We circled up, as we always do in Perimeter Community Group, and Brad was like, hey, Karen, can you step forward for a minute? I was like, uh, okay. Um, and my friend was there, and Brad said to me, hey, have you gotten your light bulb yet? I said, no, not yet. So my friend that had been praying over the light bulb and praying over me stepped forward and gave me my light bulb in front of our entire community group. So after that, Brad said, well, we're, we're all here. Why don't we go out with Karen and put her light bulb in the wall? So after we said our, our ending prayer, we all walked out here and our entire community group was there rallying behind me, cameras everywhere, videos, pictures. And I stood up on the ladder and screwed my light bulb in the into the Jesus Life wall, which was just amazing. I think through shaking and tears and just excitement, and it was, it was amazing to see everybody there. Just like after that whole rough year, I was like, it's time for me to make a change in my life. So I told, in that room, I told him what I wanted to do. And then he was like, hey bro, let's go put that light bulb in. I'm like, okay, cool. So I got, grabbed the light bulb, climbed on top of a ladder, put my light bulb in the wall, and it was like the whole room like started clapping like I've never, like I was looking around like, oh, where did you guys come from? I could not stop smiling. Um, when I put in the light bulb and all of my family group was behind me and Brittany and Anna, my leaders, they were just there and everyone was clapping. There's a picture and my smile is like from here to here. like. 
Well, the great news is coming to the end of this year, there are 544 bulbs in the Jesus's life wall. That's 544 lives who have moved from death to life and who now have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that is incredible. And the great thing about that is, is that doesn't represent every single person that's put their faith in Jesus at Passion City Church this year. I'm sure there are people in every gathering that genuinely are putting their trust in what Christ has done for them, but maybe they didn't make it out to the access space, they didn't get a bulb. Um, students at camp or people in a, another setting of our house who are putting their faith in Jesus. So there's a lot more people, but even just the 544 bulbs representing moms and dads and brothers and sisters and people of all kinds and all walks of life is so exciting. But at the same time, there are a lot of empty sockets in the Jesus is Life wall, and we don't have a numerical goal. We just wanted the Jesus is Life wall to be as big as it is, to really dominate the oval of our house and stay front and center in our hearts and in our thinking. And so we know there's a lot more room in that wall, and that is the reality of our city. There are millions of people in this city who need to hear the story of Jesus. And so as a house, we walk in and out of gatherings and we look up at that wall and we say, God, it's incredible what you've done, especially when you look bulb by bulb and story by story. And people can tell the story of that person and we see how much God has done to change that story from death to life. And so we celebrate that every time we look at the wall. But then we lift our eyes up to the city and we say, we're celebrating people who've come to know Jesus and we are still praying for and believing for the people who haven't. And we're not gonna give up on that. And you know, we may not see it this year. Someone may not see their bulb come to life this month, this year, or in their lifetime. But we have confidence and faith that we are praying into the heart of God for people. Because he said it's his desire that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so we're gonna keep believing and praying. And even, I don't know how long this wall is gonna be in our oval, but if it goes away, the winsome spirit cannot die at Passion City Church because when the winsome spirit dies, the church is done. And so we want to keep that spirit alive. We want to keep our eyes open and out to see the people of this city. And we want to have the courage, not just to tell them something, but we want to have that honest spirit of Christ in us to live something in front of them a life that shows them and doesn't just tell them that Jesus is alive and he is alive in me.